So what I'm going to be recording today is the basic sundew grow guide and it's a little bit difficult because there's so many different species that have different requirements but they're similar enough that we can sort of make a general grow guide for most species or at least just the common ones that you can buy online. So basically like the venus fly traps they're carnivorous plants and they grow in nutrient-free soil so uh, a 50 percent perlite 50 percent peat moss mix is sort of just a general mix that can work for most sundews um, and you're going to want to find one that's free of fertilizers or added chemicals into it just something that's 100 percent peat moss or 100 percent uh, pure perlite and some of these do actually grow better in long fibered sphagnum moss and what i actually have in some of these is long fibered sphagnum moss that's like 80 percent of the pot and then i have 20 percent uh live sphagnum moss on the top and some of them do better in this live sphagnum moss and you can try that out if you happen to find some when you first start growing sundew species there's different levels of challenges between each one so there's hard stuff like uh drosera schizandra and then the king sundew drosera regia which are a little bit more difficult to grow but there's really easy sundew something like a spatulata or a capensis is going to be really easy to grow and of course i left my big adult capensis sundews back at the greenhouse but a capensis or a spatulata, even something like this Adelaide, is just really easy to find online. It's really easy to grow. Basically, their moisture requirements are all pretty much the same, except for something like a regia, which you want to grow a little bit on the dry side. Um, but most of them, you grow it kind of like a Venus flytrap. So you're going to water it about, I don't know, maybe twice a week so that the soil stays moist. You don't ever really want these to dry out. Um, but you don't ever want them standing in a tub of water either. So just water it, wait for it to run out the bottom, and then repeat that either uh, twice a week if it's inside your house or if it's outside in the summertime. Obviously, you want to water it more often, but there's really never a reason to stand most of them in water. Now, some of these, like the spatulatas, if you grow them in full sun, uh, they can be sitting in a tub of water. Same thing with these intermedias. They also like to sit in a tub of water. But most of these just like moist soil and you don't really want them to be too soggy, but you never want them to dry out. And of course you want to water it with distilled water. So as for wintertime care, uh, some of them, since they're from all over the world, some of them like dormancy, so they can be left outside like this Intermedia or uh, Drosera rotundifolia. They're from North America, they can get snowed on, they don't care, they'll come back and they actually need that dormancy to grow well. Others like this uh, Capensis and even something like Aregia, uh, they're sort of subtropical, so they can handle colder temperatures. They don't really like it. You can pretty much grow them like a tropical plant and they'll do fine. And then some of these other ones I have here, like these Australian sundews, the Adelaide and the Shazandra, they like to be warm all year round. So if you just grow them in your house in a terrarium all year, they'll be fine. Now, the next thing that I'll bring up is feeding because you don't really need to feed these, although it does help, especially for growing some of these indoors in a terrarium. What you want to do is you want to feed it because it'll grow a lot better. And what you can do is you can buy fish pellets, something that's like shrimp based, and there's little pellets in there and you can crush that up into sort of a powder. And then you sprinkle the powder on top of the leaves, maybe like once a month. Um, remove it after a couple days when it starts to get moldy and that should be enough food for them for the whole month and they don't really need to get fed too much just that fish powder sprinkle on them once a month is enough to have really good growth so most sundews can be grown outdoors in full sun that's the best thing for them because they'll get all the light they need although there is some species that are sort of sensitive like this shizandra 
that if you put them outside, they'll burn in the sunlight. And then there's some like spatulas, which also kind of don't like full sun. They prefer to be inside. And this Regia is also similar. It doesn't like hot weather. So keeping it inside an air conditioned house is beneficial, but they also need good lighting. So if you don't have a space outside in full sun to grow, then what you can do is you can buy grow lights and I wouldn't go under 1,450 lumens. This is what these bulbs are. Pretty much, you should be looking for two numbers, the K range and then the lumens. So on the front of the package, it should say uh, at least uh, 6,500 K and at least 1,400 lumens. You can, of course, get stronger lights and that'll be fine, but something that's cheap like this found at Lowe's or Home Depot is going to be enough. And these are just standard compact fluorescent bulbs that you can screw into a clamp fixture like this and put it on the side of a terrarium and that'll be enough light for them. So that's pretty much it for growing sundews. They're really simple plants. Um, what I might do is I'll come back and I'll make individual videos about each species just in case somebody wanted a video all about capensis sundews or a video all about king sundews. Um, but pretty much the care for them is sort of like Venus flytraps. All you have to do is have nutrient free soil, uh, distill the rainwater, uh, don't ever fertilize them, keep the soil moist, and give it really good bright light, and they should all do fine.